Hi, this is Rhonda Layfield, and this demo on capturing data is from my Microsoft Network Monitoring Training. To capture data, I'm going to choose New Capture and click Start. Now, in a real world environment, you're going to get a lot of data really, really fast, especially running in promiscuous mode. In this situation, I've got two domain controllers running. So notice there's quite a bit of conversation happening between these two machines, even though we don't have anything connected to each other. So if I scroll down, notice I'm already up to 46 packets and I haven't done anything yet. Do not be surprised or scared when you do your first data packet analysis, you have over 120,000 packets within a matter of seconds. That's to be expected. I'm going to show you later on some really awesome tips and tricks that I have used in a lot of large environments so that I could pinpoint exactly where the data is that I'm looking for it. I'm going to stop this capture. We've got some data we can actually look at here. And notice what I have. Under Network Conversations, I have a conversation of local security authority subsystem, good old LSAS. If you highlight LSAS, then you should see the conversation between these two IP addresses. Now the machine I'm currently on is IP address 10.10.10.50. My second DC is the 10.10.10.51. And what's nice about seeing this is if you had multiple domain controllers, you would have LSAS conversations with each one of them, but then beneath that it would list by IP address this is the conversation between these two machines. And then you would have multiple conversations listed based on how many DCs you had and who was talking to who at that time. Now I did mention that allowing network conversations to be enabled by default does take up a little bit more processor time, and really all it is is just filters that are created for you so you don't have to create your own filters. And we're going to get to filters a little bit later on. So I just wanted to mention network conversations to start with. On the display filter screen, this is where you could apply a filter if you wanted to capture only specific data. And I highly recommend not ever doing this because you could accidentally exclude packets of data that could have helped you in a troubleshooting scenario because you didn't know exactly what you were looking for yet. I can't tell you how many times I've been surprised at what I found the actual issue to be based on what the symptoms were. So I don't ever, ever use a display filter. It's a very rare, I think in the 20 years I've used Netmon, I might have used a display filter twice. If we look at the information in the frame summary, notice the column headings. You can take these and squeeze them down a little bit. This would be the frame number. The first frame that was captured was frame number one. Let's look at all traffic first of all, because we were starting on frame number four, and I know that's not right. So we have frame one, two, three, four, five, and they should be sequential. If you looked at a data trace and you started with frame 1694, you have a problem. <laughs> so you're missing everything prior to that. Then you'll get the date and time of when the packet was captured. The time offset is how long network monitor was running before that packet was actually captured, which just looking at these sometimes can help you see that, wait a second, why is it taking so long to get a response from that default gateway or that domain controller? So sometimes just looking at the time offset, if it took a few milliseconds to actually get that data packet, you might have an issue of bandwidth. Here's your process name. This is the machine that your data packets, the IP address of the machine where the data packets originated, that's under the source. The destination is who they're destined for. The protocol name that created them. Here's a nice description of your data packets, which comes in helpful. We can see these are TCP packets. This is actually TCP Acknowledge, Accent, and Acknowledge. So this, these three packets are setting up a TCP connection with our second domain controller. And then we have our conversation ID over on the right-hand side. Let's take a look at just one TCP packet. So if I highlight the TCP packet, 
And then in the frame details, by the way, you can just rearrange these so you can see a little bit more information if you'd like to. You can come down here and find out. Have you ever heard someone talk about the header information on a packet? Well, the information starts here. The type of network is an Ethernet, and it's an IPv4. Destination address, there's the MAC. Source address, MAC for that guy. So if we highlight that, I could go down to the destination address. And as you can see, highlighting the destination address highlights the MAC address in hex, which is what MAC addresses are in, in the hex details pane. But the point here is to be able to highlight a data packet to look at the actual information inside that packet. Here's the source address. Highlight the source address and you can see the MAC address over in hex as well. You can see the version of IP, the header length, typical 20 bytes of data. Time to live. This packet gets 128 as its time to live. What does that actually mean? It means that every time a data packet crosses a router, the time to live is decremented by at least one. And if it takes a while for that router to process the packets across it, then your time to live or TTL could be decremented multiple times based on how congested that router is. So the TTL just gives us a nice way of saying, you know what, if you haven't reached your destination in, a tw in 128 hops, you should probably drop off the network and leave it available for other traffic that can find its destination. So think about the internet for a second. What about searches that people have created? What if those data packets just ricocheted all over the place until the end of eternity? At some point, it would be so bogged down and saturated with data, we could never do anything with it. So this is one nice, easy way that data just kind of dies after it's done with its TTL. That data packet is just dropped. Now, I know there's a lot more on this screen, but for now, I just wanted to get you kind of started and show you how to take a trace, get some captured data, and make a little bit of sense out of that data. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.